trigonometry, right angled triangles. A right angled triangle is a triangle which contains a 90 degree angle. Opposite the 90 degree angle we have the hypotenuse, the longest side of the triangle because this is the largest angle in the triangle. And the three sides of the triangle, A, B and C, are opposite their corresponding angles. Angle A, B opposite B and C opposite C. When solving problems of right angle triangles, the following two rules are usually used. The first one, the angle rule, which applies to all triangles, states that A plus B plus C, the sum of the three angles in the triangle, must equal 180. The second rule states from Pythagoras' theorem that the square of the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse, that's where the bars are there, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So the longest side squared is equal to the other first side squared and the second side squared. The structure of questions on right angle triangles are typically as follows. Given certain values for elements of the triangle, calculate the remaining elements. For example, if we look at a triangle as having six elements, three angles and three sides, or more precisely, I suppose, the length of three sides, typically we will be told in a right angle triangle that one of the angles is 90 degrees, and we may be told some of the details about the sides. In this case, we have the lengths of two of the sides, B and C, one of the angles, and the other three parts there, represented with the question mark, are at the moment unknown. And it's our task in the questions to turn a scenario like that, where there are some knowns and some unknowns, into a situation we have all the information we need on the triangle. We know all of its angles and all of the lengths of its sides. Example 1. Let's consider a triangle now where two sides are known. Given that it's a right angle triangle with sides B is 8 and C is 10. So in this triangle we're told the following two numbers B is 8 and C is 10 and that's a right angle triangle. So that's our third piece of information. And we're asked now to find A. Well, when we look at this, we can see there are two things we know. We know the 90 degree. We want to finish the whole set so we get it right. But there's no point working on the angle rule because we only know one of the angles is 90 and we can't determine the other two simply from that. So Pythagoras' rule is the rule we're going to use. Pythagoras' rule states that the hypotenuse squared, 10 squared in this case, is a squared plus b squared, but we know b, so the only thing we don't know is a. So using Pythagoras we get 10 squared is a squared plus 8 squared, 100 is a squared plus 64, taking the 64 to the other side and the a squared to the other side we get a squared is 100 minus 64 or 36 and the square root of a squared is a, the length a is 6. So we now have solved that triangle, the length of side A. We use A and the length of A interchangeably, but we really mean the length of side A. So we now have solved that, we have found the third side, and we can continue finding the rest of the information. Example 2. Here's a right angle triangle with the sides A is 6 and B is 8 you're asked to find the angle A. So we're told that A is 6, B is 8, and our focus of attention is angle A. So when you're given an angle in a right angle triangle, the focus of attention, it's very helpful to start by indicating the opposite side. So the side opposite the angle of interest is the opposite side. The side opposite the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse and the other one then becomes the adjacent. So now we have defined the three sides 
opposite, adjacent and hypotenuse for this triangle. Given that the opposite and adjacent lengths are given, we then see, is there any trigonometric function that joins opposite and adjacent? So, ka, toa. Toa would be tan, opposite and adjacent, joining the two numbers we know. So with that, we can say that tan is opposite over adjacent. So tan of the angle of interest is the opposite over the adjacent. So tan of A is A over B, or 6 over 8, the two numbers we know. 6 over 8, or 0.75. Now, when you're told that tan A is something, you can find what A is by unlocking the tan, or eliminating it. And to unlock the tan function, you take the inverse tan of the function. So inverse tan of tan, on the left hand side, we must take the inverse tan of the right hand side as well. Inverse tan of tan just crosses it out. It nullifies the, the whole effect. So we're left with A is equal to inverse tan of 0.75. And on a calculator, if we type in 0 0.75, press inverse tan, we'll get the angle 36.87. So 36.87 is the angle A that we were looking for. We got that by simply knowing two of the sides and knowing that it was a right angled triangle. Example 3, two sides and we're interested in finding the angle B. Here's the right angle triangle with sides A, 6 and C is 10. So in this case, A is 6, C is 10, and we're interested now, our focus of attention is angle B. Once again, when we're interested in an angle in a right angle triangle, we draw the line opposite that, to the side that's opposite the angle of interest. And this determines the opposite side in this triangle. The hypotenuse is still defined by being the one opposite the 90 degree angle. So the hypotenuse is opposite C, we've identified the opposite, and the other must be the adjacent. So if we now look at the numbers we know, we see that we know the adjacent and we know the hypotenuse for this particular angle we're looking at here. So the adjacent and the hypotenuse lengths are given and they're known. And is there anything that joins adjacent and hypotenuse? So, sine opposite hypotenuse, we don't know the opposite. Ka, cos, adjacent and hypotenuse, that looked promising, CAH. So we turn to the cos. Cos of B is adjacent over hypotenuse, and both of those numbers are known. So A over C, or 6 over 10, is 0.6. That's our cos B. Now, if we know what cos B is, we can find out what B is by eliminating the cos. And to unlock, or to undo, cos, we simply take the cos inverse of both sides. The cos inverse of cos B must be the cos inverse of the right hand side. Cos inverse of cos, they're going to cancel, just leaving us B. B is equal to the cos inverse of 0.6. On a calculator, 0 0.6, press inverse cos, or second function cos, depending on the calculator, and we get the number 53.13. So 53.13 is the angle B We've identified by knowing two of the sides, in this case, the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Example four, finding the third angle. Here's a right angle triangle where we're told that A is 36.87 and we're asked to find B. Well, here we're given an angle, 36.87, but also C, the hypotenuse, or the, the ap angle opposite the hypotenuse, the 90 degree, is also known. So we know two of the angles. So in this case, we can say, well, we don't need Pythagoras' rule. We know two of the angles. There are only three. 
the three angles must add to 180, we're going to use the angle rule to solve this. So the angle rule states that A plus B plus C, the three angles, must add to 180. We know two of them. So B then must be 180 minus A minus C, taking the two angles to the other side. But we know that A is 36.87 and we know that C is 90. So if we subtract the two numbers, 36.87 and 90 is 126.87. And subtracting 180 from 180, subtracting 126.87, we get the angle B of 53.13. So that's how we find the third angle. Example 5. Here we've got a side, an angle and a function. So for the right angle triangle here, we're given that A is 6, so we know one of the lengths. We know that C is a 90 degree angle and we're told the sine of B is 0.8. So sine of B is 0.8 is interesting but it's not giving us the angle B. But any angle can be determined from its trigonometric function. If we know sine of B we should be able to get B itself. So solving for B, if sine of B is 0.8 we know that if we take the inverse sine of sine, we unlock it. So the inverse sine of the left hand side, the inverse sine of sine, is the inverse sine of 0.8. Inverse sine times sine, they're simply going to cancel. So we just have B, the angle B, is inverse sine of 0 0.8. 0 0.8 on the calculator, press inverse sine, we get 53.13. So now we know that angle, we know that's 90 degrees, we know that's 6, and let's see what else we can find now from this. We're interested in finding C, the length of C. Now we know two of the angles, we know this side here, and can we do it? Well, we can. Starting with the angle of interest B, we can see that the side opposite B is this one here, B. The adjacent is the one that's not the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the one opposite the 90 degrees. So we now know the adjacent hypotenuse and opposite. We're interested in finding the length of C. So the adjacent is given and we want to determine the hypotenuse. So we know the 6. We don't know this, but we are interested in it. So we want something that links adjacent and hypotenuse and this angle. So once again, adjacent hypotenuse, ka comes into mind, and we look at the cos. So cos of B is adjacent over hypotenuse, or A over C, or 6 over C, where C is unknown. But also, we do know this angle is 53.13. So the cos of it, we can actually find out. Cos of 53.13 is 0.6. So these two things must be the same. Cos of B, found one way, adjacent over hypotenuse, must be the same as cos of B, found using the angle. So cos of B is 6 over the length of C, must equal 0.6 or 6 over the length of C must equal 0.6. So solving now, multiplying by C, taking it up to the top, we get 6 is 0.6 times C. 0.6 times C is 6. Dividing by 0.6, we get C is equal to 6 over 0.6, or 10. So we found the length of the hypotenuse. So that's how we could do it, starting with the sine function and continuing to whatever side or angle we were interested in requiring from the triangle. So here's our approach to questions. A typical problem scenario for a right angle triangle is that you might be given two sides, the length of two sides, and the right angle. And the solution approach is as follows. If you know two of the sides, and it's a right angle triangle, you'll typically use Pythagoras to get the third side. 
you may use sine, cos or tan to get the value of A or B. So if you know two of the sides, you could get, and one was the adjacent and one was the opposite, you could use tan to find out what the angle was. And when you found the tan of it, you could find the angle itself. If you know two of the angles, you can use the 180 degree rule to obtain the remaining angle. And note that the angles may first need to be established from their trigonometric values. They may tell you that sine of B has a value rather than the angle itself.